during the Crusades in 1147 AD. Crusader ships arrived in Portugal and joined King Alfonso I to take over Lisbon from Muslims. The city was plundered by Crusaders and the Muslims lost Lisbon after a rule of 500 years. Finally, in 1249 AD, King Alfonso III of Portugal expelled Muslims from Portugal. These actions of Christians against Muslims were further supported and encouraged by the popes of Roman Catholic Church. Pope Nicholas V issued Papal Bull Dom de Vassas in 1452 AD, ordering King Alfonso of Portugal to attack, conquer, and subjugate Muslims and enemies of Christ wherever they may be. In 1478 A.D., Pope Sixtus IV orders Queen Isabella to start Spanish Inquisition. Muslim in Portugal and Spain were ordered to convert to Christianity. Finally, all Muslims were expelled from Portugal in 1496 A.D. The Portuguese plan was to Christianize all Muslim lands and take over the trade with India and Asia from the Muslims. This dream of conquering Jerusalem from Muslims as the land of Jesus Christ remained alive for centuries among the Christians of Europe. But the Muslim power was so strong and united, the European struggle to conquer Jerusalem failed. Reconquista remained a dream among the Christians. The surge of Christian power in Spain over the Spanish Muslims inspired the Portuguese next door to expand their plans to spread Christianity in the world. They believed that their success in Spain and Portugal was a sign of their God's plan to eliminate the infidel Muslims from the whole world and reconquer Jerusalem, the land of their Lord, Jesus Christ. Some of them claimed that they were seeing a huge cross in the skies as a sign of good news for the Christians. Queen Isabella of Spain financed Columbus to spread Christianity in the new lands. But Columbus did not find Muslims in the newly discovered lands. Hence, there was an urgent need for a second naval expedition to find a route to India. The European trade with India had been under the control of Muslims over the land routes. The Silk Road, the Khyber Pass, and also the Indian Ocean to the west coast of India were all under the control of Muslims. When Islam expanded miraculously throughout Iran and Central Asia, the land and sea routes between India and Europe fell into the hands of Muslim rule. On the ocean route, the goods were brought by Indian merchants to Aden and Jeddah in Arabia. From the city of Jeddah, the merchandise was delivered at the city of Suez by Muslims. There from Suez or Alexandria, Europeans picked up their share of goods to Venice and onwards. The Christians of Europe considered this situation a disgrace on them, especially their holy land Jerusalem was under the Muslim rule. Hence, their ultimate goal was to somehow destroy the Muslim power and Islamic civilization similar to what they did in Spain and Portugal. By doing this, they would get the Jerusalem back and control the valuable trade from India. In 1487, King John II tried to make connection with East African Christian ruler to cooperate with Western Europe to eradicate Islam. A Portuguese naval commander, Vasco da Gama, took the stand to find a new ocean route to India. It was different from the route that Columbus took. Vasco da Gama sailed along the west coast of Africa and stopped at numerous places along the coast. However, the main question in the minds of the Portuguese was, who was that Mohammed in Arabia? How could he achieve such a success that his followers had conquered a vast land in such a short period? The Portuguese expedition considered Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a false prophet. It was their wish to go to his grave in Arabia and dig his body out of the grave to take it to Europe, then demand Jerusalem from the Muslims in exchange of the body. Oh, 
It was the year 632 CE in the city of Medina. The messenger of Allah, Muhammad, peace be upon him, fell sick with a high fever and a severe headache. He asked to be in the house of his beloved wife, Aisha, who was the daughter of his best friend, Abu Bakr. The fever and the pains in the head were so severe, and his wife, Aisha, used to wipe his forehead with a cool and wet cloth. Ten days had passed. Angel Gabriel came and told the prophet that the angel of death is at the door, asking permission to enter the house. Permission was granted. It was in June 632 CE when the great messenger of Allah left this world. Abu Bakr also announced that the body of the Prophet must be buried at the same place where his soul was extracted. Hence it was decided to bury the Prophet in his home, the home of Aisha, under his bed. The Prophet died on her shoulder and chest. He was buried in her house. What an eternal honor! Hence, the body of Muhammad, peace be upon him, the last messenger of Allah, was buried in his home in a grave dug in the place where his bed had been. Vasco da Gama came to the southern tip of Africa known as Cape of Good Hope. A Muslim navigator guided him to sail eastwards there by landing on the west coast of India. It was the year 1498 AD, when the Portuguese commander Vasco da Gama discovered the ocean route to India. His first settlement was the city of Calicut. Of course, this was a happy time for the Portuguese because they established their colony in India for trade and for a secret mission to steal the body of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Trade was not the only purpose of this Portuguese colony. After da Gama returned to Portugal from India, a fleet of 13 ships with 1,200 men and several Christian priests were sent to India in 1500 AD. The instruction was not trade. The instruction was to preach Muslims the Christian faith. If the Muslims did not accept the beliefs of Christianity, put them to fire and sword and carry on fierce wars against them. Taken from Baros da Caras da Asia. The establishment of Portuguese colony on the west coast of India was a great accomplishment of the Portuguese. It served two purposes, control of trade between Europe and India and destroy the Muslim control. There arose a man of vision and strong belief in this respect. That was Alfonso de Albuquerque of Portugal, a naval commander who came up with a master plan. He announced to his king that he would divert the waters of the River Nile from its place of origin to eastwards so that Egypt would not get the waters of the Nile. This would destroy the Muslim civilization of Egypt, thereby giving Portuguese full control of the Red Sea and block the Muslim trade to India. During the same period, he would steal the body of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, from Medina. He would then bring the body to Portugal and announce the possession of the body to the Muslim world. 
With the growing successes of the Portuguese, there was high confidence that they will succeed in their missions and their Lord Jesus Christ will dominate the entire world. He would then demand the Muslims to give Jerusalem back to the Pope of Rome and Christians in return of the Prophet's body. Peace be upon him. He said that he and his people were seeing the vision of Jesus Christ. With this determination, he followed the route of Vasco da Gama and came to India. Alfonso de Albuquerque first landed in Calicut and moved to Goa in 1510 AD. His next plan was to block the Muslim trade routes to India through the Red Sea and Persian Gulf. The plan of Alfonso Albuquerque was to hit the very heart of Islam. This is what he wrote in his plan. As he hoped with the help of God to accomplish very soon, he had a mind to fit an expedition of 400 horsemen in transports, disembark them in the harbor of Yambo, march rapidly to the temple of Medina and strip it of all its treasures, for they were indeed many taking, as well as the body of its false prophet, and conveying it away with a view to ransoming the holy temple of Jerusalem in exchange for it. This could have been carried out very easily, for at Yambu is but a day and a half distant from Medina, where his bones lie, and that is but a small place with no one in it except a few moors, or with three hundred Arab horsemen, no one would dare attack our party. By the time the news of our entry into Medina had reached Cairo, we should have all returned to the port of Yambo and re-embarked, written by Albuquerque, 1875 A.D. The Portuguese fleet, with 1,700 Portuguese soldiers and 800 Indian soldiers, left Goa, India on February 7, 1513, to capture the port of Aden. Now to Albuquerque cautiously began to move into the Red Sea. He anchored his ships every night and finally landed on the Cameron Islands, a small island in the sea. The European writer Baros da Gadas da Asia wrote, It would not be difficult for us to enter the Red Sea and take the city of Jeddah, a port very nearby, by which we could go to Mecca and thence to Medina to steal the body of their prophet and hold it in our possession, in the same way as they hold Jerusalem, which is the home of our faith. Here at the Cameron Island where de Albuquerque and his fleet had anchored while waiting for an opportunity to go towards Jeddah and attack, very heavy winds from the north started to blow towards the south, disabling the Portuguese navy. for three months on this island, but the winds did not slow. Another event occurred at this island. Alfonso de Albuquerque and his people saw the Holy Cross in the heavens over the land of Prester John, Ethiopia. The cross was very clear and the passing clouds could not block the view. Everyone in the fleet saw the Holy Cross. It was so clear that they all bent down on their knees. Tears were flowing down their cheeks, and any cloud which came over it was torn into pieces. De Albuquerque saw the cross and cried loud. He announced that the Lord had come to him. He said that the Lord was calling him to go to the land of Prester John and not to Jeddah. He ordered all ships to move towards south. The expedition to Jeddah was abandoned. Was this not a miracle? The body of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was saved.
While sailing towards India, de Albuquerque came near the port of Aden. Once again, his passions to capture Aden and execute his master plan rekindled. He and his ships landed at the small island of Syrah near the port of Aden and began the artillery attack towards the harbor of Aden. The battle was fierce. One of those prisoners was Gregorio de Quadra. During his captivity, Quadra mixed with the Arabs, learnt Arabic and pretended to be among the Arabs. But in his heart, he was the enemy of Islam and Prophet Muhammad. After his release, he did not go back to Alfonso de Albuquerque. Instead, he joined a royal caravan to Mecca. The Arab king gave all the facilities of travel as a royal guest. Quadra looked like a Muslim saint, and the Arabs trusted him as their own. When the caravan arrived in Medina, the king and his people surrounded the grave of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and recited the Quran and prayers for the Prophet. However, Quadra remembered Jesus Christ. Tears were flowing on his cheeks, and the people around him were astonished at his passion, thinking he was showing affection to the Prophet. He then tried to catch another caravan going towards Damascus, where he wanted to visit the graves of Prophet's family but the caravan to Damascus had already left. He determined to travel alone through the desert. The desert was so big, he consumed all his food while walking alone. He began to eat locusts and winged creatures. The heat of the desert damaged his body severely. He had only one piece of cloth to hide his private parts. The sun was so intense that he developed very painful blisters all over his body. He could not lie down on the desert sands due to the blisters. He began to dig ditches like graves in the desert with his own hands. He then got in the middle of the ditches, stood on his feet and slept standing. A horrible punishment indeed. Gregorio finally collapsed with a final Christian prayer on his lips. Fortunately, he was saved by a passing caravan who brought him to Christian King Dom Garcia who in turn sent him back to India. Here in India, in the Portuguese colony, he was declared a Franciscan friar in the Capuchin order. Gregorio died in India. De Albuquerque could not conquer Aden. Quite frustrated, he began to sail towards the east and finally landed in India. He knew that his grand plan was failing. De Albuquerque, however, was a great explorer and naval commander. He fell sick and died on his way to India in 1516. He was buried in Goa, India, with great honors by the Portuguese. He had laid the foundation of churches on the west coast of India. However, he died with a great frustration and disappointment for failing in his mission of destroying the Muslims and stealing the body of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. He died, but his dream to destroy Muslims and steal the body of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was kept alive. The Muslim Caliph now focused on the Red Sea and the security of Arabia and the two holy sites in Arabia. The news that Portuguese had a plan to humiliate the Muslim world by taking the body of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and destroy the Muslim trade with India and eliminate Islam. The Portuguese wanted Jerusalem back to the Christians through bargaining the return of the body of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The entire Muslim world was scared of this grand plan. To secure the holy places, Mecca and Medina became a primary issue in the Muslim world. The Caliph finally sent 66 ships with 20,000 men, including 7,000 marines. 
This huge Muslim fleet arrived at the Portuguese port of Du in India on September 4th, 1538 AD, and the siege began. The Turkish bombardment on the Portuguese colony lasted for two full months and mostly weakened the Portuguese defense. They warned that the Portuguese should abandon their wicked plan. The Muslim forces did not want to conquer Indian lands. They returned. Estavo da Gama, the son of Vasco da Gama, who discovered the sea route to India, became the viceroy of Portuguese India. He received royal orders from Lisbon, Portugal, to march towards the Red Sea and go to Suez and burn the Muslim galleys there. Estavo took 72 ships and set sail on New Year's Day, 1541 AD. He calmly entered the Red Sea. When he arrived at Suez, it was a scary and nervous moment for him and his crew. There were 50 galleys drawn up on either side of the tongue of the land and behind them batteries of heavy artillery. It was a disheartening and scary sight. Da Gama almost had a nervous breakdown. Fearful, he ordered his ships to return quietly and extremely fast without the Muslim fleet hearing about their presence. This was finally the end of the Portuguese plan to steal the body of the Prophet and destroy the Muslims. It was the year 632 CE in the city of Medina. The Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, peace be upon him, fell sick with a high fever and a severe headache. He asked to be in the house of his beloved wife, Aisha, who was the daughter of his best friend, Abu Bakr. The fever and the pains in the head were so severe, and his wife, Aisha, used to wipe his forehead with a cool and wet cloth. 
In those days, there were no pain medications. There was no cure for a fever. Prophet's only living daughter, Fatima, the most beloved, visited him. She was the wife of the most beloved Hazrat Ali, may Allah bless him, who was also the cousin of the Prophet. He gave his last seven silver coins to the poor. He gave his land to the poor. His armor, which he gave to a Jewish person as collateral, was cleared. He ordered that Arabia must be free from paganism and idol worship. His wife, Aisha, did not even have oil for the lamp. She borrowed it from a neighbor. The entire Arabian Peninsula had converted to Islam. Bibi Aisha, the wife, the mother of the believers, had one cup of barley and one mule, but she had the head of Prophet Muhammad on her shoulders and chest during these last moments. Ten days had passed. His Sahabas, companions, had gathered in the mosque which was attached to his wife Aisha's house, but the fever never went down. Angel Gabriel came and told the prophet that the angel of death is at the door, asking permission to enter the house. Permission was granted. The angel of death asked the prophet if he wanted to stay on earth for eternity with all the power and luxuries of this life, or would he like to come and meet Allah now? When Prophet asked Gabriel his opinion, Gabriel said that Allah was waiting to meet him with great happiness. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gave his consent to extract his soul. It was in June 632 CE when the great messenger of Allah left this world. When his great friend Abu Bakr heard about his death, he came running from outside and saw the dead body of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He kissed the forehead of the Prophet. When Omar bin Khattab, may Allah bless him, heard the news, he felt insulted and could not bear the burden of this news. He exclaimed that whoever said Muhammad was dead, he would kill him. However, Abu Bakr announced that whoever worshipped Muhammad, let it be known that Muhammad was dead. Whoever worshipped Allah, let it be known that Allah never dies. Abu Bakr also announced that the body of the Prophet must be buried at the same place where his soul was extracted. Hence it was decided to bury the Prophet in his home, the home of Aisha, under his bed. Bibi Aisha had the greatest honor of treating her husband during these last days. The Prophet died on her shoulder and chest. He was buried in her house. What an eternal honor. It was also decided that the body must be buried by the family of the Prophet. Hence the uncle Abbas and the son-in-law Hazrat Ali took the lead in performing the funeral and burial of the body of the Prophet. How to wash the body? With clothes or without clothes? This was the question in the minds of Hazrat Abbas and Hazrat Ali. During his sleep, a voice came to them, wash his body with clothes. They shrouded his body with the three white garments from Sohul, a city from Yemen. There was no shirt and no turban. Fadi and Kuthram turned the body Usama and Shukram poured water on the body, but they were blindfolded. Ali washed the body. Hazrat Ali is the only person who gave the Prophet his funeral bath and lowered him in his grave. The Sahabas prayed to Allah for blessings on him at his body in groups for more than two days 
because there was no single imam at this time. Hazrat Ali lowered the body in the grave with the help of Hazrat Abbas. Hence, the body of Muhammad, peace be upon him, the last messenger of Allah, was buried in his home in a grave dug in the place where his bed had been. His wife, Aisha, lived in the same house alone, safeguarding the grave of her beloved husband, Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. It has been written that she used to stand near the grave and remember him and pray for him for hours with her head bent down. The angels were accompanying her. She had the honor of being the wife of a human being who had been certified by Allah as the mercy to all mankind. Two years passed. Her father, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, was buried next to the grave of the Prophet. Aisha, may Allah bless her, lived in the same house with two graves now, one for her husband and the other for her father. She would visit these two graves every day with her head down in remembrance. The angels were with her joining in the sadness of separation. She was perhaps the most beloved of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Prophet died on her shoulders. Twelve years passed. Caliph Omar, may Allah bless him, was buried next to the grave of her father with her permission. Bibi Aisha, may Allah bless her, was now living in the same house with three great graves, the greatest being that of Prophet Muhammad. But now there was a difference. She had a curtain in the house separating her from the graves. Why? Because Caliph Omar was a stranger and not a brother. She used to put on her hijab whenever she visited the graves. She did not leave the company of her husband and her father's grave, and she put her hijab because Caliph Omar was a stranger. Bibi Aisha lived in the house with three great graves for more than 40 years, approximately after the death of the Prophet. She died at the age of 68. She prayed to Allah that he would show her husband in her dream. Her prayer was granted. She saw the prophet in her dreams every alternate night. A few years later, she saw him in her dreams every night. What a glory. O oh Allah, bless the mother of believers, Aisha, who served the Muslim communities for a long time and conveyed her salams to the noble prophet and husband at his grave till she died.